China stocks in rally mode as investors await the National People's Congress in Beijing, which kicks off on Sunday. Investors focus on China's estimates for growth this year. Economists expecting GDP forecast to top 5 percent, while those for inflation could come in at roughly 3 percent. President Xi also expected to make his biggest <clears throat> government reshuffle in a decade, consolidating the CCP's grip on power. So how could this year's Congress impact the investment outlook for China? Tim, we go to you, of course. I, I think we can soften up some of the, the, the geopolitics right now. And I, and I think seemingly coming out of a Congress, um, she will have cemented more power. This should take him uh, off the war path, if I may oversimplify right. this. I think if you want to also oversimplify EM investing, it's all about the dollar. Uh, the dollar's rallied 4%. That's coincided with a pullback of about uh, you know, 6 or 7% in the EEM or whatever you're tracking. Um, I actually think that the dollar is probably in the short term, based upon both Fed dynamics and some of the data we've had, has, has had a peak. I think the dollar is going to go lower. It doesn't have to go a lot lower for EM to start to rally again. I also think people are underestimating just how powerful the China effect is on the rest of the world. It's an $18 trillion economy. It's not just EM. Uh, the U.S. is a $23, $24 trillion economy. China is not that much smaller, and we're talking about a place where, yeah, a lot a lot of that stimulus is already out there. But the second half of 23, to me, is more about where China is. And look at Las Vegas Sands, all, you know, getting back to, you know, essentially two-year highs. Some of the plays that are really China-specific um, are ways. And I look at the resource stocks. I look at steel companies. I look at copper. Um, these are all telling me that I think you should not underestimate China. Right. And then also, to, to take a look at the delegate list, I mean, in the past, uh, they've, they've showcased a lot of the internet stars, the internet entrepreneurs, yep. Jack Ma, the Netties founder, uh, et cetera. But this year, they're switching to hardware. So they're going to chips. They're going to, you know, the, the companies that make stuff. And that really highlights where China's head is at when thinking about where to stand technologically, particularly when it comes to this war with the U.S. when it comes to we own AI here in this country, we will use our own systems, we have our own technology, and we will be our own force, particularly when the U.S. is putting up barriers to us. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know from a PR standpoint, which do they want to put it? Do they want it? We're, we're very pro-business or we're not. I don't know what, what plays better to the crowd, mm -hmm. um, but you're right to, to, I mean, they have to sort of address what we're doing, I would think. Um, but I've been surprised a couple of times with some of the actions that, so I, I'm not invested. I'm just sort of nervous about something coming out of left field. So if everyone feels like I do, then it's great to be invested in China, right? <laughs> so, Julie, are you in China or an EM? No, I mean, I, I agree with Tim. It, so much of being able to get EM right is about being able to get currency right. And that goes way over my little bitty brain. Um, I think there's plenty of opportunities in the U.S., more so than needing to go into China, where, you know, the market dynamics are so complex and you have this invisible hand that's actually not so invisible of government. Um, for me, that makes it hard to feel good about investing over a five-year horizon. There is also the Taiwan element to all of this and this the backdrop is that the u.s just approved a 619 million dollar purchase of new weapons um by taiwan including missiles uh grasso so there's that tension which could lead to other rep repercussions for american business every time you see chinese uh related stocks rally 10 percent they sell off 20 percent so the reopening is juxtaposed to whatever geopolitical volatility that we're going to see. And now they have a no limits partnership or, or uh, alliance with Russia. That doesn't bode well for national security or the way the world is setting up. So I, I think you have to be very careful about investing in China. And really quickly, when you, when you put up that screen, five to 6% growth with 3% inflation, if there was ever a time to question the economic data coming out of China, it's probably going to be now. But I, I do think that when they do reopen, it's going to be uh, disinflationary versus inflationary. And I think that's the key that most people are missing with, uh, with growth. 